Remember how I said that when I was a kid, nothing was more terrifying than a scorpion? Well, that was accurate right up until I was introduced to the giant desert centipede. Childhood fear of centipedes? Well, that makes two of us. Yes, you heard that right. I was once terrified of centipedes. And I'm sure exactly 0% of you will be surprised by the news that I am not scared of them anymore. Well, except for Azog, she was a lunatic. Ooh, goes, I'm not afraid of much, but centipedes haunt my very existence. And that is because I was told they have a bite that is more painful than a rattlesnake. And I was told that all centipedes are deadly. The difference is one of us has outgrown what we were taught as a child, while the other still has a bit to go yet. However, I did go through this agonizing experience. Ooh, that brings back memories. Now, on the topic of Coyote's bite video, I'm not gonna say for certain whether I think he hyped up his reaction. And while it is true that his response to the bite was so much worse than what bite reports for this species usually describe, allergic reactions to centipede envenomations, while an infrequent occurrence, are not unheard of. So that possibility does remain. That being said, there are reasons to be sceptical about Coyote's bite and sting videos, and I'm not just talking about the centipede here. But I think that's a topic for another time. Mario centipede! Holy cow, giant desert centipede. Where's that? It just went right up, right up underneath this log. It's right here. I saw it dart right into this. Look at this, right through the hole right here. I see it, I see it. I see a little bit of it. Okay, I'm gonna flip that log over. Oh, this is, this is my personal nightmare right here, okay. And this is one of my main gripes with Coyote. Letting his own personal fears get in the way of providing objective information. Like, we get it, you're scared of centipedes, points been made, no need to re-emphasize it every 10 seconds. Now, the giant desert centipede is, without question, one of the most painful bites you can receive in the United States, period. You think of a rattlesnake as being something you don't want to get bitten by? I have been bitten by the giant desert centipede. Okay, that is just ridiculous. Now, I'm not going to deny that centipede bites have the potential to be very painful, but I would take a centipede, especially one like Scolopendra heros, which is not considered especially venomous over a potentially deadly snake any day of the week. To put almost any centipede on the same level as a rattlesnake is sheer lunacy in my opinion. There we go. Do not bite me. How exactly is it supposed to bite from that position? It's like standing on the shore and being worried about getting eaten by a shark. The more calm I stay, the more calm the centipede will stay. Compliments given where they're due, that is very sound advice for working with centipedes. I'd also like to add that there is a difference between calm and cocky. Take it from me, getting cocky around centipedes does not tend to end well. Yeah, no matter what you do, whenever you're interacting with a centipede, your heart absolutely races. Hey, did you guys know that Coyote Peterson is scared of centipedes? Oh, you did? Well, too bad. Listen to him tell you exactly that once again for the 50th time. You hear the name centipede and you think, okay, is that a thousand legs? The prefix centi means hundred, not thousand. No, on average they have somewhere between 50 and 60 legs depending on the size of the centipede. Size and number of legs on a centipede are not positively correlated like that. The centipedes with by far the largest number of legs belong to the order Geophilomorpha, which are mostly very small soil-dwelling centipedes. All of the giant centipedes belong to an order called Scolopendromorpha, which have far fewer legs than the Geophilomorphs. And the exoskeleton, which lines each segment of the body, is incredibly rigid. Actually, centipedes tend to have a rather thin exoskeleton. A thick, rigid exoskeleton would severely compromise their flexibility and agility and make them far less effective hunters. So, it's not that you would ever want to step on top of one of these things, but if you accidentally did, you're not going to squish it. All it's going to do is spin around and bite you on the foot. Centipedes are definitely resistant to pressure, and I wish I could say the same for myself during exam season. But they don't owe that to their exoskeleton. 
Instead, because centipedes often shelter by wedging themselves into tight crevices, centipedes are naturally very compressible animals. And they actually feel kind of squishy. Now, it's not an insect and it's not an arachnid. It's something called a myriapod. Centipedes and millipedes both belong to that family. Myriapods are not a family, they are, if I recall correctly, a subphylum. The taxonomic classification of Scolopendra heros, the species in this video, is as follows. Kingdom Animalia, Phylum Arthropoda, Subphylum Myriapoda, Class Chylopoda, which are the centipedes, Order Scolopendra morpha, Family Scolopendridae, Genus Scolopendra, Species Scolopendra heros. Was that an opportunity for me to flex? Maybe. Now, right up front here by the head, they have these two very powerful front mandibles. Those mandibles each have a venom gland on them. The centipede's venom claws, or forcipules, toxicognaths, whatever you want to call them, are not mandibles. Mandibles are mouth parts, whereas a centipede's forcipules are modified legs that are not even part of the head, but connected to the first body segment. A centipede does actually have mandibles, but they're quite small and weak. And immediately subdues the prey, and then they essentially just drink out the insides. I feel like Cody might have gotten the feeding method mixed up with spiders here. Spiders liquefy their prey's innards and then suck them out. Centipedes, however, simply, well, chew them and eat them. And centipedes certainly don't just eat the insides either. Oh, and also, kind of unrelated, but does anyone else here think this centipede is pre-molt? This is what I would actually call a smaller giant desert centipede. They can grow up to 12 inches in length. If we're talking body length, which is the standard way to measure centipedes, then 12 inches or 30 centimeters is just way too big for Scolopendra heros. Scolopendra heros is usually in the 15 to 20 centimeter range, so the one in this video is actually a reasonable size for the species. It's hard to keep composure when working with a creature like this. Yeah, in case you weren't already aware, Coyote Peterson is scared of centipedes. Feel like I've heard that before. But if there is one creature on this planet that truly makes my skin crawl, it is the giant desert centipede. Did you know that Coyote Peterson is scared of centipedes? Slowly set the centipede back down onto the ground, and we're gonna go in the opposite direction. Going in the opposite. <laughs> I don't care how scared you are of it. It's a centipede, not a charging rhinoceros. Just take one step to the side and keep bloody walking. The bites and stings have certainly garnered their fair amount of attention, but nothing is more important than bringing you an education. Okay, if that is his genuine intention, then great. But as far as education goes, what do you get from this video? A bit of very baseline, googleable information, some of which is wrong anyway, and the little known fact that Cody Peterson is scared of centipedes. And don't even get me started on the music choice. It's a film about an invertebrate, not Jack the Ripper. If there is one thing, just one thing, I hope you walk away with when it comes to centipedes, it's that they have a painful bite so bad, it sent me to the hospital. And again, here's the thing. He professes to be a passionate wildlife educator, and yet the take-home message from so many of his videos is always fear. You could emphasize the important ecological role that centipedes play, or how much of an evolutionary success they are, or what surprisingly good mothers they can be. There's so much more to these animals than just a painful bite, and if you really are a wildlife educator, then you should emphasize that. Do not try to interact with these animals. If one crosses your path, simply take a step back and walk in another direction. Or, and hear me out on this, just walk right past it. And with that little rant over, I think this is the perfect spot to end this video. Now, if you are interested, I have also filmed myself getting bitten by a centipede. And while it is certainly not a good showcase of what a centipede's bite is capable of inflicting, it definitely exemplifies the fact that they are not monstrous animals out to get humans. So I'd really appreciate it if you would check that video out. 
And of course, if you enjoy my content, then feel free to subscribe. It really helps me out a lot, especially now with my activity at quite a low point. Although it is starting to build up again, so that's a good thing. So thank you all very much for watching. That is it from me, and I will see you again very soon.